he's nothing to me, Matthew Levson's heartbroken mum's outrage at his gay lover as Inquest finds he wasn't to blame for her son's death, despite dumping his body in a bush grave. Matthew Levson's heartbroken mother has opened up about her anger at her son's gay lover after the bittersweet coronial inquest into the 20-year-old's death. Mark and Faye Levson were told on Tuesday the coroner could not make a finding into the cause and manner of Matthew's death in Sydney on September 23, 2007. Mrs. Levson told Daily Mail Australia she and her husband should never have been forced into a corner to choose between bringing their son home and having justice served after Matthew's boyfriend, Michael Atkins, was acquitted of murder. It was our number one goal to bring Maddie home, we shouldn't have been forced into a corner and choose between bringing Maddie home or justice being served, Mrs. Levson said. It doesn't get any easier. The fact that he hid him for years, denying any knowledge, saying he was in Thailand. All because he was facing the law, then decides he knows where Maddie is. Deputy State Coroner Elaine Truscott's findings on Tuesday came two years after the inquest began and more than eight years after Atkins was acquitted of murder. But the Levsons don't believe Atkins' latest version of events and still allege he's responsible for their son's death. You don't do that to someone you love, he said he loved Maddie but that's CRP, Mrs. Levson said. He never tried. Nobody has seen him since the day Matt he was found. But I don't want to see him, he's nothing to me. The coroner said Atkins was the only person who could provide the answers as to how Matthew died, and he'd been given the opportunity to do so during his protected evidence at the inquest last year. For reasons unknown to me, he did not take that opportunity, Ems Truscott said, later adding that Atkins had not been a witness of truth. Atkins. 54, finally led police this year to Matthew's remains in a South Sydney National Park after striking a deal to avoid contempt and perjury charges over lies he told during his inquest evidence. He told police he panicked and buried his boyfriend's body in bushland after finding him dead from a drug overdose. Justice won't be served and it won't ever be served thanks to our so-called justice system. We have 18th century laws in the 21st century. The victims need more rights. Mrs. Levson said she is still trying to comprehend the 139-page coronial inquest only hours after she left court on Tuesday. The grieving parents said it only gets harder during Christmas time and her son's 31st birthday which would have been on December 12. We haven't had time to think about it all. There's still things to be done, we haven't had Maddie's funeral, Mrs. Levson added. We will get to being Maddie home as to when I'm not sure yet. Although they want justice, they say they achieved their main goal from the inquest, to find Matthew and bring him home. Our son was the most precious thing to us and to his brothers, why would we worry about Atkins, Mrs. Levson said on Tuesday. We would have loved both but we were forced in this corner, and Maddie comes first every time. I was hoping at that stage he might go to jail and with luck might be killed in jail. Mark Levson said in an interview with 60 Minutes earlier this year. When asked whether he wants Acton's dead, he replied, yes. Slowly, painfully. And Mrs. Levson earlier stood in court and accused Atkins of possibly smothering, drowning or burying Matthew alive. We will always be left worrying, did Maddie suffer? Mrs. Levson said. Did he die quickly or was it slow and painful? Was he terrified? As she spoke, her son's remains were being held in the marg under the court. Mrs. Levson also revealed her son would not be wearing his favorite suit when his family finally bury him. They cannot dress a skeleton, she told the court. We had to watch Maddie be exhumed from the grave, piece by piece, bit by bit, and then rebuilt and then watched him be packed up into two cardboard boxes and some evidence bags, she said. Matthew was last seen leaving Darlinghurst's Ark Unite Club with Atkins in September 2007. Atkins long denied any knowledge of his whereabouts, but finally led police to his bones at a national park south of Sydney after striking a deal last year to avoid contempt and perjury charges. Police offered the 54-year-old the deal after he admitted lying during the investigation into Matthew's disappearance and while giving evidence during the inquest. He told them he decided to bury him in bushland after finding him dead in their bedroom from an overdose of GHB.